Okay, so today's video from East Coast Rep Rap Fest is brought to you by really sketchy trade show tables. Yes. Because this machine is uh, putting this table to the limit. And Mark, what are we looking at here? Because this, normally you build a 3D printer, right? You get some NEMA 17s, you get some belts, you get some gears. Right. The, the current hotness is you put that in a box with a Core XY motion system and you sell it. This is, it's in a box. I don't see no NEMA 17s, I don't see no belts, I don't see no gears. What, what, is, what is this machine? Uh, this is an uh, engineering prototype of Manevio X. Uh, it's using a linear motor, uh, motion system, uh, so it has no, no belts, uh, no step motors for the X, X and Y. Uh, it's, uh, I think the correct term is a magnetic actuator. Okay. Yeah, so the design, but we usually call it a linear motor. So for those at home that don't know, basically for a linear motor, you're taking a, a traditional, like a, a, a NEMA 17, and instead of the motor's magnets being arranged in a circle around the stator, you just lay them out. You just fillet them out, basically, and it runs along that. So this machine is surprisingly quiet. There's no belt noise, there's no right. gear noise. You don't have to worry about a squeaky bearing. If you look closely at anything, take a shot later, it's not, uh, there's actually a gap between where the extruder mounts on top of the rail. Yep. So that you actually, there's a lot less friction on there. So that's why there's a lot less noise. Okay, so there's actually, is there any contact between the motor and the the, the driving magnets or whatever? Uh, or? There's on the side where you, there's a kind of like a bracket that kind of holds it there. But it's, in the center, it's uh, there's a gap there. Okay, and it, it, it's not true like meg lev like a train. So yeah. there's still rails to guide we, the motion. Right, so. and you still have to kind of hold it back, okay. yeah. So what kind of speeds and feeds are you getting out of this machine? Because this is, this machine will be for, you can pre-order it right now, will be for sale, and you should be able to get it by the end of the year if you pre-order soon enough. But this is an engineering prototype. So how, how much speeds and feeds are you pushing out of this right now? Uh, so we can, so right now we can do about 700 millimeters per second on a, a 200, 0 0.2 millimeter layer high. Uh, and with a 0.4 nozzle, so, so I want to give you a little more details. And you can do about 60 millimeter cubic per second in terms of the flow rate. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we can push it at the moment. Awesome. Um, so, and the acceleration goes up to about 22,000. So 22,000? Right. Okay. Know, in the final as, as long as you're not on a rickety trade show no, table, too. No, no, no. <laughs> and also, I think we're going to make the frame even a little bit more rigid. Frame so, a little right, bit more so, rigid. It's all metal, but we're going to make it a little bit more okay. rigid. Yeah. So for the bed here, the bed is looking a little bit more traditional. So we have four stepper motors. These are stepper motors here on lead screws. So you got four point. It does the whole bed tramming method. It, it does that too. So okay. it has a 48 point, it uses a low cell 48 points to do the okay. leveling. And surprisingly, this is running just normal clipper. It's just normal clipper. In fact, I, I want to give a shout out to the clipper team where it actually makes the development of printer a lot easier. I think we are not the only one in kind of like a professional industrial printer that use clipper. I believe Cadium Design, Zax, and a couple other ones does that too. I think the main reason is because I, I call the idea of virtualization of hardware. So when you're developing the printer, you don't actually have to get down to the yep. nitty gritty details of that. And yep. that makes building, setting up firmware for that printer a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. complex ones. Yeah. Exactly, so you're, you're, you're not taking, like some other companies are using Clipper, but they're they're modifying it, not following the license. You, you're just running normal right. Clipper. Yeah, and I did talk to Kevin O'Connor, of the of founder of the project, and, and you know, we are, the pro we are now a sponsor for the project. And he didn't specifically mention that if you want to be a, a sponsor for the project, you you have to open source, you have to follow the standard, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, we do use standard Clipper, but we're still going to release the source code just to prove that that's what we've been using. And e even the electronics in here are normal electronics. We were talking, you have you just have an octopus in here. I have and a, a, octopus, a big tree octopus in there. I think it's a HG717. Okay. Uh, so that, that, yeah, it's one of the octopus. I think there's like three versions of that. Um, and also running on uh, Orange Pi. So if somebody were to say, if they had this machine and they wanted to change anything on it, it it's it's normal Clipper. They if they, they know they, what they're doing, they, they could, could just... put maybe uh, the new Raspberry Pi 5 in there. Yeah. They could do that, yeah. And it does come with the camera, which is something I've been harping on higher end printer manufacturers for a while now. You know, if you're paying several hundred to thousand plus on a machine, cameras are cheap. Modern printers should have a camera. This printer comes with a camera, and I like to see that. Uh, now, this engine symbol doesn't have the pull out, but you will have an Ethernet pull out. So oh, you will have Ethernet? Gonna, we're gonna awesome. Pull out, and also the, an extra USB port. Okay, not, so you can plug it in whatever right. you want. Right, I think 
you know, you can see there's actually design school holes here. You can, I, I can see some of the use of making- If something comes out in the future. Making the new, right, yeah. you can make the- So you could, side. if you really wanted to, you could put like an enraged rabbit carrot feeder right. on this. So we'll leave, we'll leave the room for that, yeah. Awesome, that's great to see. You were telling me on the drive over here, Yeah how this machine kind of came, lockdowns in Shenzhen yeah. kind of led to the creation of this machine. So you want to tell me the story? Yeah, about and it involves you as well. I think, um, <laughs> so uh, in 2022, I think we, uh, it was the last year of the COVID and, and we start, well, we're still getting, you know, uh, lockdowns in Shenzhen sometimes. And uh, the, during the summer of that year, uh, our engineering team was locked down for about 21 days. We were just in our own lab and we had so you're you know, stuck in the lab, you're, no, you're no locked in, you can't leave. Yeah, yeah, just four guys plus me. And so we start watching a lot of YouTube videos, like <laughs> many of you, um, and watch a lot of uh, Volon contents, including, uh, <laughs> including yours and, and, couple, and, and Daniel Modbot, and I'm sure there's a couple others I didn't mention. And then uh, we couldn't go out, but they still let us all the stuff from Alibaba. So we start ordering all the parts on the bound list and start building them. So that's kind of the beginning of that. And, and you can see a lot of Volon influence in here. Um, you know, the ZX setup, the, the, the yep. electronics we use. Um, but also, you know, at some, at, toward the end of that, we start thinking like, okay, um, <laughs> how, how, can we, uh, how can we, you know, take it next step? And so we're thinking about linear yeah. motors. Uh, that's kind of how we start the process, yeah. I am, I am really excited to see the final production version of this machine, because even again, for you know, for those looking at the machine now, this is a production sample, an engineering sample, so it, it doesn't represent the final product, but it, it's meant to show off what the final product can do. And even now, I'm this thing moves with authority, and it's surprisingly quiet. Now, granted, if you slap on, this will have an option for a blower fan, right. and, you know, once you crank your fans to the max, you're still going to get that noise, but you're not getting belt noise. You're never going to have that squeaky bearing that's always, you know, making that noise. It's, it's surprisingly quiet for how fast this is moving. Uh, build volume is 300 by 300, or 300 by 400 right. by 300, right? Right, and the reason for that is you see the one that axis stack on the other one. Okay, I see. So this is actually a stronger, stronger axis. It's okay. Little, right, so yeah, that this makes has sense a drive to motor. just yeah. make it a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, you make it thick already. Yeah, it, it, it's funny, when you scale up a printer, in some ways it really doesn't cost that much to scale it up, right. because you still have the same number of motors, you still have the same hot end, you just need a bigger frame and you don't, you don't need any more bearings, you don't need any more belts here, you just need a, a bigger frame basically, and bed. Now, with this being a linear motor, if somebody wanted to do an IDEX version of this, yeah. you would basically just need another tool and you could just drop it on, right? You can do a drop on. And yeah. then change the config. Right. So. That's, 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 that, that, that's one thing that could be done. Yeah, I think that's, that's, I think that's one of the attractive things about linear motor is that the setup is a lot yeah. simpler. You don't need right. to worry about stacking extra belts or fitting another motor in there. You just literally take another carriage and drop it on the rail and off you go. And well, to make the extruder even easier to replace. Yeah, because oh, I even that, yeah. 90% of the troubleshooting is uh, it's on the extrusion side. Yeah, you don't have so, to worry about undoing belts or anything. Right, you so just... I think that's where we're going to focus. I think that's, as most of OEMs going to focus on that easier service of the extruders. Okay. Now, now for the hot end, um, it looks kind of standard, but obviously there's some difference there. So we got, what? what is, what do you have in this hot end here for the tool head? Uh, so it's a 7.2 gear uh, extruders. Okay. Uh, it's able to push the filament with about 90 ton of force. Okay. Uh, and you can, the flow rate can hit a maximum about 60 millimeter, cu millimeter cubit okay. per second. So and you can do that by doing have a different uh, length of nozzle. Is it is it an off the shelf hot end for like an existing manufacturer or did you get your own custom uh, made? That, that's a great question. I think the high end part it's uh, actually custom okay. because you need a different length. But the nozzle it's standard E3D V6 volcano. Oh, so any volcano nozzle will drop in this. So yeah, yeah. So that, that's actually a, I specifically tell the engineer I I want that so oh, that, that's great. That's you know, great. if they if they that place they cannot get to us. They can at least swap the nozzle. Whereas a a, a bulk of the problem it's actually. Awesome. At that point, yeah. So you, your end stops for the XY are optical. You have a load cell in the tool head? We have a load cell in the tool head, also a filament runoff sensor as well. A filament sensor as right. well. And so for the tool head board, it is similar to a Big Tree Tech tool head board. Is it CAN bus? Or uh, it's using a USB. It, it is, is USB? USB? Okay. Now for the final production version, I know there's our, this has been teased on the internet already. It's been premiered. So people have seen pictures of it in video. But I know some people were worried about the, uh, the magnets being exposed. So right. how will that be? rectified in the final version. We're gonna have a coating on top, so okay. it's gonna protect from it, from both the dust and also structures. Okay. And the motors themselves, they're good to 
You said 80 or 90 C before they start being affected by temperature? Right, so you still getting closer, but it's not gonna, I think active cooling, cool heating is not, probably not gonna be a good idea if you hit it over 100. Yeah. Okay, so as long as you're not running a chamber temperature above 80 C, you, you're, the magnets won't be any of an issue. Awesome. So again, this is on for pre-order now, not a Kickstarter, which is great to see. Uh, so there's a special discounted rate for, for now, right? That won't be the final price. That right? won't be the final okay. price, yeah. Um, and again, if you pre-order now, you might be able to get this before Christmas, hopefully. That's that's the end of the goal. We want to start shipping out to the warehouse uh, in November. Awesome. Uh, hopefully, and then do a local delivery from the local. Okay. Right. And this again is your first time at making an, a, uh, a filament 3D printer, right? It's actually from the first, commercialized one. First commercial one, one. But the other one before, yeah. it, um, you know, it was the best thing though, but it didn't actually commercialize. Okay, yeah, because uh, Pia Poly is known for resin, right? Most, right, we saw that as a so. resin company, yes. So, well, I, I will say for a, a first uh, commercial printer, you guys kind of, you came in with a very strong offering right off the bat, I, I think. Well, I, I can't wait to see this machine in people's hands because uh, it is, you know, from somebody that's been kind of harping on that, you know, 3D printers are Lego, Pretty much every company just takes the same parts and arranges them in a different fashion. It's great to see something new. And uh, I like it. I like it. I'm really impressed with what you guys have come up with. So uh, great chatting with you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You're doing a great job, man. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the uh, the star of the show here. Um, what's your name? Raymond. And what do you do, Raymond? I'm just a table holder. <laughs> <laughs> the best table holders. Best table holder. Now engineer, yeah.